Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, um, I'm gonna nerd out a little bit today because I got a little bit of a technical problem I wanna deal with. It actually starts with this thing. About a year ago, Jordan got me an Amazon Fire Stick loaded up with a bunch of uh, really cool software that gave you access to all sorts of movies and stuff like that. And um, I'd seen him use, he had one of these and I've seen him use it a bunch of times at his place. And I don't know, maybe I seem to really be bad luck or something because every time he, I would go over and he would try and use it, it wouldn't work really well. And, uh, you know, he kept saying, oh yeah, you, this usually works really great, but it never seemed to work really well when I was there. I just assumed it was because I was bad luck or something like that. Well, anyway, shortly after that, like I said, about a year ago, Jordan bought me one of these loaded up with the same software. Now, uh, with the software that gained access to all the movies is called Cody. You had to go in periodically and clear the cache in order to make sure it works right. Now, cache isn't C-A-S-H like uh, you think of money. Cache in this case is C-A-C-H-E and it stands for, well, and it's, it's basically it's digital memory. Uh, you gotta remember with streaming data, when you have internet, uh, the internet is not always stable. Sometimes you have a big burst of data coming at you and other times there are pauses while it's reading and writing and transferring and shifting stuff to other people. And so if you were trying to stream data without a digital cache, what ends up happening is when the data was flowing, the movie would, would be running, but the second there was a pause to do something else, the movie would freeze up. So what the cache does, it's a little section of memory and what it does, if, if you're watching a movie, and the data and you're in a point where the where the data is coming faster than you need it to it downloads a whole bunch of the movie and stores it in this little section of memory so that when the uh when the modem is writing or helping someone else or just pause for whatever reason the movie continues playing because now it's just pulling the data out of this memory out of this cache well, normally with most programs, the cache is cleared automatically when you shut the program down. For some reason, the Kodi software though, maybe it's a little primitive or something like that, you have to go in manually from time to time and clear the cache. And that's kind of part of the process and Jordan kind of mentioned that to me, you just gotta do that. Well, I would do that uh, with, the, with the device I had. I assumed maybe that the problem he had was uh, was internet and you know because his internet was a little unstable uh, and mine was a little bit better in California so I thought maybe it might work better for me well I would go in and I would clear the cache and the program still wouldn't work very well in fact it got to the point where it wouldn't work at all where I couldn't even uh, go to the main home page it just it would say it would give me some sort of an error message so a few weeks after I got it I actually stopped using it I unplugged it put it in a box and I haven't used it now until about a week ago. Um, now, about a week ago, I was uh, trying to watch something on Netflix and I was using my DVD player as my Netflix player and it was starting to give me problems. It wasn't working properly. It, it would keep forgetting my password. And it's always a pain in the neck when you got a, a 40 digit password that you have to punch in using, you know, one of these little thumb wheel things and, you know, scrolling to each individual letter and it was really a pain in the neck to do that. And after four or five days in a row of doing that, I kind of gave up and decided, well, let's go back and see if this uh, fire stick thing works. So I plugged it in and boom, the fire stick worked perfectly right out of the gate. The Kodi software was working. It was capable to go back to the home page. Everything seemed to be working really well again. And I started thinking, well, why is that? You know, nothing has changed. I haven't done any software upgrades, nothing. The only thing that's changed is that the thing has been unplugged and in a box for almost a year. And it dawned on me, that's what's going on. There's something going on where from time to time, this thing needs to be powered down. Now, I always knew from the Kodi rem or from the Fire Stick remote that there was a power button up here that you could use to turn the power on. But if, you, if the thing was on, you press the power button again, it would not power the device down. So it seemed to me that the thing, once it got turned on, and you know, it would time out after a while and kind of go into an offline standby, but it would never actually power down. And that kind of made me think, you know, with electronics, sometimes you get a little bug in there. And once you get the bug in there, if you don't 
turn the power off and allow the thing to pop properly shut down, that bug will remain forever. And when I powered it down, it allowed the thing to shut down, fully reset the software, and then when I turned it back on again, it reboot from the beginning. Well, so that became uh, clear that in addition to clearing the cache on this thing from time to time, you need to interrupt power to it. And uh, it's kind of a pain in the neck to do so because I have kind of limited power uh, powering my entertainment system right now. It's just two electrical outlets and I have a couple of power strips plugged into it. Now, that's where the second pro that's what actually triggered this whole thing that we're gonna do today. Because in the past, uh, my entertainment system consisted of my cable box, my DVD player, my, a computer, and my TV. And I could control that with one power strip. Uh, but now when I've moved into my place here in Waco, I also have my router and my internet modem connected to the same device. And here's where the problem is. This is the power strip that I usually use. And normally when you think of electrical outlets, you think of, some, of a, or when you think of a plug, you think of something like this, where you just plug it in and you have, in the, in the case of this power strip, you have six outlets, one, two, three, four, five, and six. But in recent years, everybody has started going to plugs that are more like this. This is a transformer. And what this does is this takes the 110 volts that comes from the wall and knocks it down to the voltage that the device uses uh, which is usually 6, 12, or 15 volts, or some smaller voltage uh, that goes into the device. This allows you to make the devices like the DVD players, the cable boxes, and all that fun stuff uh, smaller and safer because now you don't have to have a high voltage power supply inside the, the uh, DVD player. We'll use the DVD player as an example. Oh, it sounds like it's raining again. Cool. Um, and uh, it makes it safer because now if somebody opens it up, there's no high voltage in there. All of the high voltage stuff is in here and this thing's sealed up. So it's a safer uh, device. But the problem is these plugs are larger. And if you plug one of these into one of these six outlet uh, power strips, you're not losing one outlet here. You're also losing the one beneath it. Plus, since the cord hangs out of the bottom, you're actually losing three outlets. So... This thing that normally would have been able to handle six of these kinds of plugs can only now handle two of these. And since I've added two new devices, the modem and the router, to my, inter to my uh, entertainment system, uh, this power strip just isn't enough to do it. Uh, because both the modem and the router have a plug like this, and so I have to get more power strips in order to do this. Now... One of the other problems that comes with power strips, these are all kind of designed with this kind of plug in mind, where the two, the two pins are parallel to the length of the device. So that means that when you plug one of these things in there, it's also parallel versus going this way. Now some of the newer ones they have, have these plugs here rotated 90 degrees. So instead of plugging in this way, the plug goes in this way and you can get all six of your outlets plugged in again. So that's kind of you know, what I want to do today is I want to go over to Home Depot or maybe Best Buy if I can't find it at Home Depot and get one or maybe two power strips that have these plugs rotated 90 degrees so that when I do have these things plugged in, when I do have the power connectors with the transformers on them plugged in, they aren't covering up three outlets. So that is our task today is I want to go out to Home Depot or, like I said, Best Buy and see if I can find something like that so that what, what I can do then is plug in... Sorry, I got everything all tangled up here. So that when I, what I'll do is I'll plug in just the Kodi just into, this, into one of these power strips so that when I need to power the device down, all I have to do is flip this switch off and that'll kill the power to the Kodi system. Uh, without actually having to pull the TV away from the wall and get behind there and that's just a real pain in the neck and it's also kind of dangerous because my thing's really top heavy. So that's what I want to do today is I want to go to Home Depot and buy one of these different kind of power strips so that it's very very easy to interrupt power to the to the uh, fire stick and hopefully um, make it easy to reset the power on the fire stick 
when, uh, on a very on a regular basis, maybe every night when I power it down. Additionally, we got a really nice little storm last night. You may remember a couple days ago, I did a uh, vlog that was called, you know, the, the, talking about how unpredictable the weather is. Well, it was unpredictable again last night. It was like 88 degrees yesterday and at, you know, at the peak and they were predicting rain last night. Well, that rain came about, came about midnight last night and we got in about a three hour period, we got about an inch and a half of rain, which was really nice. But what it also did is it dropped the temperature about 40 degrees. What is it right now? The temperature is 45 degrees right now. So it went from 88 degrees yesterday to 45 degrees now. So yeah, and it's, and it's actually raining again right now. So that's nice. Like I said, this is sort of the reason I came to Texas in the first place is I wanted to get a little bit of weather and we definitely got it last night. It was a nice electrical storm that went on for about three hours. A lot of thunder, a lot of lightning, uh, and it rained really hard for oh, 20, 25 minutes or so. And uh, looks like we still got a few more storm bands of rain coming in so uh, that was kind of fun too you know like I said that was one of the reasons I chose Texas is because it isn't like California where it doesn't ever rain you know the downside is you know you could get a 40 degree change in temperature over a 12 hour period but you know what I'll live with that that's kind of like I said what I wanted was a little variety out here so like I said I just wanted to share that a little bit with you also so let's go over to Home Depot and let's see if we can find those power strips all right, so I think I'm going to go with this one here. Then I don't need to get two of them. This has eight plugs, and as you can see, the plugs are oriented uh, perpendicular to the length of the strip rather than parallel. Plus, the fact there's extra space between these two outlets. Plus, and you really can't see it there, but that, that little black strip next to the power strip is actually two USB ports, which is kind of cool, too, because uh, it actually turns out the uh, the... Amazon Fire Stick is, can be powered by a USB port, so I could actually plug it into that, and if I keep the thing accessible, then I could just disconnect it, the power right there. So I think by getting one, one uh, device here, I think this will cover my needs. I'd be surprised how many people are looking at me weird walking around in shirt pants and a t-shirt. I don't know, what's wrong with these people? All right, so I got this thing out of the box, and I'm trying to figure out how I want to mount it. Now, what it has, it has these little hook things here on the top where you can kind of just wrap the cord around it. And since it's got the little loop here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill a couple of holes into the side of this thing here. And we're just going to mount this, just going to hang it right here. So I think what I'm going to do is I've got a couple of little hooks. I bought a, like a little kit of uh, nuts and bolts and screws and hooks and things like that when I first moved here. And it included a couple of hooks like this. So I'm just gonna drill a couple of those into the side of this thing here, and then I can hang this thing here, and it'll be real nice, because it'll be nice and easy access. I can wrap everything around, plug it here, and I have my main power switch here, and my USB ports here, so when I plug in the uh, Amazon Fire Stick, which just goes right into the top of the TV here, into this unused HDMI port, It'll be real easy if I want to repower everything, you know, power down the fire stick. All I got to do is just pull the plug here. So I think this is going to probably be a very convenient place to put it. So let's get that done first. And this wooden base is just something cheesy I made, I made uh, at home in California uh, just to be a temporary stand for the TV because normally the TV was mounted on the wall and uh, the, the mountings for all that went into the, st into the storage locker, went into the pod really early. So since the TV was one of the last things I wanted to have go, um, I needed to have some sort of temporary thing. So this isn't a normal example of my quality work. This is just uh, something I threw together quickly to get the work done. So the bottom line is I don't really care if I drill holes into it because it's just a temporary thing until we get into a house and can mount the TV on the wall again. And that's sort of the kind of the finished product here. I had to kind of rearrange a few of the plugs a little bit to make everything fit. But uh, yeah, we're looking good here. I even got two extra outlets here. So let's power the whole thing up, make sure everything works. Yep, everything seems to work. But since I've uh, interrupted power to the cable box, it takes it about 20 minutes to resync again. That's one of the things I'm not really a huge fan about Spectrum with. You know, it used to be on the old system, you'd turn on the cable box and five seconds later it'd be on. But 
whatever, you know, I don't watch that much TV anymore anyway. I'm halfway thinking about getting rid of just the cable TV because I think I've had it on twice since I've uh, been here. So whatever. But the DVD player works, the computer works, and the Amazon Fire Stick works. And it's going to be a lot easier now to interrupt power to the Amazon Fire Stick because all I got to do now is just run over here and pull that plug right there. And that's a heck of a lot easier than having to pull the whole thing away from the wall and, uh, you know, hope I don't tip the whole thing over just to get behind the system so I can interrupt the power to that. So I think the next thing I really want to do is I want to just kind of close off this gap here a little bit. I'll just put some boxes or something in the way because the cats like to get behind there and I don't really like them back there with all the wires and stuff like that. You know, there's not really a whole lot of lethal voltage back there, but when they start messing around with things, you never know what they're going to pull over and all that fun stuff. So anyway, that is what I've done there by adding that power stuff. That's going to be a lot better for me. So that's it. There you go. Now I've intentionally left the modem plugged directly into the wall rather than going onto the power strip. That's this plug right here because occasionally you got to reset the modem and you know, it's really easy to do that. And all I got to do is just boom, pull the plug on it. We're done. So while I was at Home Depot, I got a call from my mother with an update on my father. Apparently he's doing well. Uh, they're uh, planning on hopefully t uh, letting him go home on Monday. Right now it's Friday the 11th, just for reference for all of you. And uh, his physical therapist has been in there for the last few days and he just loves to walk and walk and walk and walk. So he's really getting ready to go home. Uh, his blood pressure is getting back to normal. Uh, apparently when they get him up and, you know, right before they go, go out on the walks, they like to check his blood pressure. And I guess the most recent number was 97 over 42, uh, before he got out of bed. But after he did his walk, they tested it again. He was back up to normal levels at like 120. And I don't know what their, I don't know what the, nor uh, what the lower number was, but they're very happy with that. They seem to have controlled, uh, whatever was causing the blood pressure issue in the first place. So he's uh, feeling better. He's raring to go, ready to get home. Now, one of the things they have noticed is that his uh, bilirubin levels have been going high. And I got to admit, I never even knew what bilirubin was. I used to work at a medical laboratory, so I'm usually pretty good with most of the blood chemistry stuff, but I've never heard of bilirubin. So I had to look it up. Apparently, it's a substance produced by the liver that helps uh, destroy aging red blood cells. And uh, the doctor isn't really terribly concerned about this, but says that they're, they're kind of keeping an eye on it and says it's often the result of uh, having the TIPS procedure. So it's just something they're going to have to monitor. Now, apparently the normal chemistry levels for bilirubin is 0 0.3 to 1.2. And apparently at one point he got up to 40, which is like, you know, we're talking like almost 40 times normal level. Uh, so, you know, that was... Uh, way, way high up there, but uh, apparently whatever they're doing, they're trying to control it right now, and it is actually starting to go back down again. So his primary doctor isn't really terribly concerned about it. They feel they can deal with that, and I guess they kind of expected that was going to happen. So anyway, I think that is all that I have to talk about today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.